Hey guys, day two of the Buckeye Bike Show was absolutely incredible. Seeing tons of cool bikes, watching Flatland riders, meeting legends and making new friends. For a BMX fan, it really doesn't get much better than this. In our last video, we covered the screening of the movie Rad with Eddie Fiola and Mike Miranda, and then the big bike ride out in Dayton. It was super awesome, but this second day was equally amazing. And today we're gonna dive into the show itself as well as the dinner party with Hollywood and Fiola. Okay, so the Buckeye Bike Show is more than just a collection of cool bikes. It's a trip down memory lane. It's about reliving those childhood memories, exploring the neighborhoods, riding trails in the woods, and making jumps with friends. It's about those first tastes of freedom, like riding across town to buy candy and Slurpees. Being at the show rekindled those old memories and really amplified the joy of the BMX community. Before we get started, shout out to all the support of BMX wives. My wife thought she'd just be filming, but she got really into it and she even connected with some of the other ladies. And she prefers to stay off camera, but she was so stoked from the night before that she bought an Eddie Fiola shirt from Mindy over at Rad Designs 1986, and then she proudly wore it all day. And yeah, my Lavender Hutch Hollywood is now pretty much her bike, so that's pretty rad. We bounced back and forth between activities throughout the day. So to keep the video more cohesive, I'll group it into a few themes, an overview of the bikes on display, uh, visiting the vendors, uh, interactions with Eddie and Mike, and then meeting some of the other attendees, the Flatland Jam, and then finally the dinner event. Let's dive in. We arrived at the main entrance to the Nutter Center around 9 a.m. and the place was totally empty. And we thought, did we miss the memo or something? But after a minute of looking around, we realized there was another parking lot and entrance down a back room. Okay, let's start with a quick overview of the setting. Everything was inside except for the food truck and about one third of the space was reserved for the Flatland Jam. And then the rest was for the show space with the entire perimeter surrounded by vendor tables. This really was a perfect setup. As the show organizers, Jamie Allen and Trent seriously know how to run a tight ship. And also big kudos to Glenn from the Cincinnati Flatland Fanatics for running the Flatland Jam too. It was so cool. I'll show a few of the bikes, but to keep things interesting, we'll focus more on the overall experience rather than endless bike footage. I'll add some more bike shots towards the end for those who want to geek out on the bikes a little bit more. There were about 25 different categories with trophies awarded for each. The categories were divided into styles like racing and freestyle and further split by years and sizes. So if you brought a couple of bikes, you had a pretty good chance of winning at least one trophy. But I gotta say in a few categories, the competition was pretty stiff. So John DeBruin over at Hutch partnered with Alan and the Buckeye team to produce a special run of 26 inch Hollywoods to help support the show. And I got in on that and built one up and it was an honor to have Mike sign it the night before. And if you saw my part one video, you'll recall Alan talking about the custom one he built for Hollywood. And it started out as a chrome frame set from Hutch and then Alan worked his magic to have it powder coated in candy pink. And I gotta say, it's absolutely beautiful and no wonder it won in its category. I'm a sucker for anything Hutch or GT, so I tend to get most excited about seeing those, but it was so much fun checking out all the other bikes and occasionally having conversations with their owners. So yeah, being a Hutch fan, I was stoked to meet Jim and his Hutch XL29. He's more into bike life and doing wheelies than nostalgia for retro bikes. And it was fun to chat with him about the differences between his bikes and a typical retro bike like mine. And most of his peers are into SE bikes, so it was cool to see him go all in on the Hutch one. You'll also see his OG frame from his childhood on display. So cool and great meeting you, Jim. As we're passing through these other bikes, I gotta say just how amazing it was to meet so many people throughout the day who came up to tell me that they had enjoyed my videos. What an honor. I met so many cool people and I wish I could have captured more stories and interactions. I handed out a bunch of nostalgic neighborhood stickers and every last one from our friends over at Amy Grips. It would be awesome if we could convince some of the iconic brands like Amy to come out to the show next year. So speaking of brands, let's check out some of the vendor stuff. First up is Rad Designs 1986. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen some of our collaborations leading up to the show. And it was super cool to meet Mindy and the team in person. They've got such cool merch and it was awesome to see it all in person. Good. So can you tell us a little bit about Rad Designs 1986 so and what you guys got here? We do merch for Eddie and obviously Rad Designs merch too. So got a lot to choose from. Uh -huh. Yeah. A lot of really cool stuff. And so you do these designs yourself? You come up with the designs? I do a lot of the designs. Uh -huh. We run them by Eddie and make sure that he's good with it. And then we put it out. Right on. Yeah. yeah you guys do such a great job. Thank you. So cool. 
If you're into BMX, you probably know that Torker has made a big comeback this past spring with Bill Ryan reviving the brand. Fiola and Hollywood both rode for Torker back in the 80s, and it was awesome to see them reunited. I think Torker sponsored some of Eddie's travels to the show, and it was great to see them represented through Eddie. And I'd love to build up one of their new Torker freestyle frames. They're so cool. Okay, I want to shout out to poor boy Steve next. I love his creativity and sense of humor. His stuff is absolutely on point. And we only chatted for a couple of minutes, and I intended to come back and see if he'd chat with us on video, and of course purchase some goodies, but I kept getting distracted and before I knew it, the day was over. Poor Boy Steve's unique and humorous BMX themed merchandise is a must see. His site offers everything from shirts to posters, stickers, and even skateboard decks. I'm definitely gonna order one of his Mr. T shirts from his website. I'll put a link to his online shop in the description. You should check it out. There were quite a few other vendors with all sorts of cool stuff. And again, the day just kind of slipped away and I wish I had taken more time to check them out. I seriously can't wait until next year. I'm gonna be there when the door opens and then be a little bit less scatterbrained throughout the day. Okay, as Alan described in the part one video, one of the goals of the show is to give fans the chance to interact with their heroes from back in the day. And this year's headliner was Hollywood Mike Miranda, and he's just too cool. I was still reeling from the ride out the night before and the kind words that he shared while signing our hutch. And I had picked up this vinyl record last year from Bill Allen, who played Crew Jones and Rad. And I thought it'd be really cool to ask Hollywood and Fiola to sign it, and it was cool indeed. Oh yeah. Yeah! See you later, Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Then we headed over to where Eddie was signing autographs and he signed it too. This was my first time chatting with him and it literally blew my mind when he recognized me from my videos. I watched a couple of your uh, your videos Thank talking you. about, uh, you know, Buckeye and everybody who's going to be here and, and appreciate it. We talked about his new YouTube channel and I was thrilled when he asked for my thoughts and tips on it. So we are working now on a YouTube channel. We within a month we got over 10,000 subscribers right we we just got monetized which um, we didn't think we were uh -huh. and now we are and so we're just trying to do more and more stuff and have you seen any of the content that we have done I have I've seen the most of it so like it dislike it any 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 um, helpful words because you are a youtuber and you do sure. videos so I'm I've only been doing it for a year. Uh huh. The story, like for me, like there's a hundred videos of like somebody just like showing their bike or whatever, but like telling the story of like how you felt when you had the bike, or like that's what you know, people relate to the stories and stuff. So, and that's what you guys are doing. So, yeah. a bike that I'd love for you to sign later. If bring, I it, bring it. Bring it by later. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. The day became a bit of a blur after that. I think we had lunch and then I fetched my 26 inch GT performer to have Eddie sign it. This was also a super cool interaction. He sort of critiqued my setup with some insights from his experiences before he signed it. All right, look, you got the videographer here all, all right. the time. No wonder your channel goes ahead always, right? Cause he's always talking about bikes. He's got this blue GT. What color is it? It's not the baby blue, it's kind of a Kind of a powder, right? Maui blue. Maui, yeah. Maui blue. Yep. Right? It's got the gyro up on top, and it looks like it's slightly, slightly not tuned right. <laughs> Just because I know Brian Skura, right, right. and I know that it's supposed to be, these top tabs, uh -huh. these tabs are supposed to touch these tabs on full extension. It was really rad. Our conversation was so engaging that I'm planning to make a full video about it. Thanks, Eddie. Oh, and one more thing to share about Mike and Eddie. They were casually getting a couple of photos made towards the end of the day. And since there wasn't much of a crowd around them, it didn't seem too intrusive to ask for a quick photo with them. And they were happy to oblige. Those guys are so friendly and you really couldn't ask for better figureheads of a sport. So thanks again, Mike and Eddie. I had chatted with Alan and Jamie online a little bit before the event, and I was hoping to get interviews with them and Trent to hear their stories. And although we didn't manage to do a traditional interview, I captured more footage with Jamie, adding to the conversation with Alan from the night before. And we also had the privilege of sitting across from Trent at dinner, and we enjoyed some great conversations with him, even though we didn't get it on video. Jamie built up a baby blue Hollywood for the show too. I love it, and obviously Hollywood did too. 
I wish I could shout out to everyone else with more than just a couple of quick mentions. And it was fun to meet friends that I've only interacted with online before. And there were a couple of instances where I met someone and I didn't realize at first that I was already following them on social media. And it's great now to match names and faces with online profiles and Instagram handles. I also met tons of new people that I never interacted with before. This community is fantastic. The shared love for BMX instantly connects you with people, making them feel like old friends. And as I said in part one, I feel like I could have been best friends with pretty much everyone I met, and where else can you say that? Next up is the Flatland Jam. And again, I wish I had taken more time to capture even more content here. This isn't a competition where everyone has their routines worked out and you show up and watch a bunch of polished performances. Instead, it's friends hanging out, trying new tricks, encouraging each other, leveling up, and just having a lot of fun. I've got a lot of footage of the riders trying new things and not always landing them, but that's the spirit of it. And there was so much happening, it was hard to capture everything without really focusing in. But I did get some cool clips, including some with Eddie and other riders. And before we knew it, it was about 4 p.m. and everyone was wrapping up. We had tickets for the dinner event at 6.30, so we decided to head back to our hotel room to relax for a bit. So yeah, the dinner was a ticketed event and it was limited to around 40 or 50 people. It was held at the Cold Beer and Cheeseburgers restaurant a couple of minutes from the venue. And it included an all-you-can-eat burger buffet, which was actually pretty good. And they had a custom drink menu with some fun BMX themed drinks and cheap beer too. By the time we were ready to find a seat, most of them had already been taken, but there were a couple right in the center of the main table, which turned out to be perfect. We sat right next to the Rad Designs 1986 team and a couple of seats down from Eddie, and then Trent and Jamie ended up sitting right across from us, so that was awesome getting to know them better too. Mike stood up at the head of the table and he told all sorts of stories throughout the evening. It was so awesome. I captured most of it on video, but Eddie already has it all up on his YouTube channel. This video is getting to be long enough already, so I'll show a couple of highlights and then I'll link to Eddie's video down in the comments. You should go watch it. There's some gold mine of content there. It's a, it's a brotherhood of BMX, brothers and sisters, right? It's a big BMX family. And uh, I'm always, always, always uh, appreciative of having so many family members. It is great. I always feel no matter where I go in the world, I'm never alone because I always have friends and family, right? right. You guys should feel the same way. 
He asked me how did I get the nickname Hollywood, and Good it was morning. not it was not Good meant morning. as a compliment when I got it. Uh, when I was when I was young, real young, I used to flag. It was my first job flagging at the motocross track. It was I got seven dollars, but I had the best seat in the house, and I was the youngest flagger. The uh, we had a local motocross pro who I will not mention his name because I did the first time I told the story and it kicked get back to him. So I won't say his name, but this motocross pro, local pro, uh, was just a jackass of a guy. <laughs> Terrible. He's the kind of guy with the, hey kid, and you turn around, he, he'd roost you, and throw dirt at you. <laughs> he was just a terrible guy. Oh, man. And so we would say, uh, oh, heck, I used his name. Uh, we would say, oh, man, you're such a bower. Don't be such a bower. If you did something dumb, we'd say, oh, you are such a bower. Well, this guy showed up at the first big national motocross by our house, and he had Hollywood across the back of his jersey. And we're like, of course he has Hollywood on his jersey. Well, fast forward, I went, on one of those uh, races my dad took me to, the rule at the track was you had to have long sleeves. Right? To ride practice or to race. You couldn't race in short sleeve shirts. And I had forgot my jersey. And so my dad said, Oh, there's, there's something in the car. Go look in the car. By the way, my dad's Mexican. If you can't tell my acting. He said, Hey, go look in the car. And I'm looking around and I find this long sleeve, big pointy collar Hawaiian shirt with oil streaks in it because that's what you use to check the dipstick. <laughs> <laughs> just oil strips all over the thing. So I put that on and I started racing. I came down and I was in last place. And my buddy, who also was a flagger, was in the shade of the of the announcing tower. And he goes, "Oh my God, check out Hollywood." <laughs> and the announcer says, "And in last place, it's Hollywood Mike Miranda." And it's not. <laughs> I've been trying to live up to that name. <laughs> but it's not lost on me that everything I have, every, everywhere I've got to go across the world, all came from BMX. So I'm always, always grateful to be amongst my family members again. Because this is, to me, like I said, I travel the world, I'm with family. Because there's, everywhere I go, and Eddie will attest to this, everywhere I go, Someone asked me about rad, or so, it comes up. It comes up in conversation all the time, and uh, it, I couldn't be happier for the way my life has turned out. If my plane should happen to hit a mountain on the way home, it's been a great. It's been, oh, it's okay. No, it's fine. It's been a great. It's been a great race all the way. So, Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. So yeah, afterwards, it was just hanging out with new friends, many of who felt like old friends at this point. Eddie came over and sat across from us for a while and he shared some really cool stories of his stunt work in movies, TV commercials, and even as a stunt double in a Dixie Chicks music video. It really was a lot of fun. And then a huge shout out to my new friend Daniel from the Chicago area. We connected briefly at the ride out and then we had some fun conversations at the hotel bar afterwards. And he and his wife were at the dinner too. And my wife and I had a great time hanging out with them after the dinner and sharing stories. It was so much fun. And I think the four of us were literally the last people out the door as they closed down for the night. It truly was an amazing time. So next year's event is set for June 15th with a ride out the night before as always. And they've announced Ron Wilkerson as the main guest. And the energy at the event as they revealed this was off the charts. Ron is a BMX legend known for pioneering the sport in the 80s and 90s. He's most well known for his time with Haro, where he became a key figure in freestyle BMX. And then later he founded the iconic brand Wilkerson Airlines and continued to influence the sport. It's gonna be awesome. If you can make it next year, I strongly encourage you to. I'd love to meet you there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all my latest content. Uh, drop a comment below about your favorite part of the Buckeye Bike Show or share a memory of your BMX adventures. I would love to hear from you.
All right, we'll see you in the next one.